You've trained a number of models using the regression and classification learner apps. You've also changed some hyperparameters manually to try and improve the results. However, manually adjusting parameter values is an impractical approach to finding the best set of hyperparameters. Now you'll learn how you can use optimization to automate this process. In this video, you will optimize a decision tree, optimize an ensemble of decision trees, and apply an optimized model to test data to complete the machine learning workflow. Before you begin, note that the optimization routines randomly select the initial set of hyperparameter values. This often causes the final results to be slightly different each time the optimization is run. So if you are following along, the numbers and figures you generate might not match those shown in the video. Let's get started. The regression and classification learner apps provide a number of optimizable models. This video focuses on decision trees and ensemble trees. Though the process of training an optimizable model is the same no matter which model you choose, the options available will depend on the type of model. Previously, you've seen how the minimum leaf size affected the accuracy of decision trees and ensembles of trees for the May taxi data. For the single trees, increasing the minimum leaf size increased accuracy. But for the bag trees, it had the opposite effect. How can you pick the value that maximizes accuracy? Let's begin by optimizing a decision tree model. Trees have only one hyperparameter to optimize, the minimum leaf size. Surrogate decision splits are useful with missing data. If a node's predictor value is missing, another predictor is used at that node. Since the current data set doesn't have any missing entries, you can leave this option turned off. Click Train to start the optimization. A minimum mean square error, or MSE plot, shows the progress of the optimization. The optimization runs 30 iterations by default, but this can be changed in the Advanced Optimizer Options dialog box. The points convey information about the best model identified so far. Do not mistake them as specific results for each iteration. The dark blue points show the MSC of the best model when applied to the training data. The light blue points are an estimate of the MSC using all sets of hyperparameter values tested so far, including the current iteration. You can see more details about this plot by clicking the link in the bottom right corner. The optimization algorithm selects the hyperparameter values that yield the best estimated MSE. This is often the model with the minimum observed MSE, but not always. So, how does the model with optimized hyperparameters compare to the one created with the default settings? The result is a minimum leaf size close to 36, the number used by default in the coarse tree model. This was the best performer of the single tree models from the beginning of this module. The optimized tree is an improvement, but the error is still higher than the bagged ensemble. Let's see if optimizing an ensemble model can reduce the error even further. Ensemble models have more hyperparameters than single trees. They are ensemble method, minimum leaf size, number of learners, learning rate, and number of predictors to sample. Optimizing five hyperparameters requires many more iterations and can be very time consuming. Here, it looks like bag trees are better suited to the taxi data than boosted, so let's stick with a bagged tree model. In general, you may need to try both. Optimizing the three remaining hyperparameters can still take a long time. The 30 iterations for this model took over an hour on a reasonably powerful laptop, so let's skip straight to the results. The optimizable ensemble model has the lowest RMSE of all the models trained so far. But the number of learners is high. When exported and saved, this model takes up over 2 gigabytes of disk space. It is also much slower at making predictions than the bag tree model with 30 learners. 
The optimization algorithm selects the best model based solely on its accuracy, but your application may have other constraints. You can reduce the size of the model and increase its speed by reducing the number of learners. Let's try a smaller number of learners and see if a similar accuracy can be obtained. The results look great. The prediction speed is much faster, the exported model is significantly smaller, and the RMSE increased only 1%. You now have your final trained model. Remember that even though you're performing holdout validation, the final model is trained on the combined training and validation data. The final step is to apply it to the test data to evaluate the performance. To do this, export the model to the workspace and apply it to the test data held out at the beginning of this module. Remember to apply the same pre-processing steps to the test data as you did to the combined training validation data. Then use the exported model to predict the duration of each trip. How did it do? Let's use the R metrics function to compute the mean absolute, mean square, and root mean square errors, and the R squared value of the model's predictions. The error metrics show that the model performs well on the test data, with an RMSE very similar to the training data. This indicates that the model has not been overfit. The R squared value also shows that the model does a good job capturing the overall trends in the data. But do the predictions align with the actual trip durations? Let's create a response plot to check. Here you see there is good overlap between the actual and predicted durations, indicating that the model performs well for most trips. The residuals can also be useful for evaluating the performance of a regression model. Let's look at the residuals as a function of trip duration to see how the errors look for short and long trips. Notice that for short trips, which are the most common, the model performs well and the residuals are near zero. For the less common, very long trips, the model struggles. This could be due to unforeseen circumstances like accidents or road construction. Additional features for these events might help improve the model. However, on average, your model can predict trip duration to within three minutes. Well done! This completes the machine learning workflow. To recap, you started with a spreadsheet containing historical trip data, you explored and cleaned the data, generated new features, then successfully trained, validated, and tested a predictive model. You're now ready to use this workflow to create models of your own.